Well, it's Halloween. It's about 8.30 in the morning. We got a lot to do today. I'm going to try to work on that tabletop and put some more finish on the base of it. And I'll show you guys how I make my finish for my furniture projects. On top of that, I need to saw up some poplar and some pine to finish off the lumber that we need for the drying shed. We got to get that thing building. And if I can switch this camera around, I don't know if I'll get any footage of it, but there's an eight pointer about 50 yards from me here. So stand by. I tried to get some decent footage of him uh, through the trees, but it's kind of hard to tell. When we put this video up later, I'll try to do some zooming with the uh, editing software, see if I can get some decent photos of him. But we live out in the woods here and we have deer just everywhere come through the property at all times of the day but he's a good sized buck and he comes through about every morning and then we don't see him for the rest of the day and i've yet to get a good picture of him that's about the closest i've gotten to him so far so anyways uh i got a meeting this morning at 10 o'clock which really uh puts me even further behind on what i need to get done today and my son has his horse riding lesson this afternoon, so we got that going on plus Halloween tonight, so I don't know how productive this day's going to be. So I'm going to try to get to work here and get this tabletop going. Then after the meeting's over with, I'll try to get back here and get some sawing done because I really need to start that shed before winter hits in. Because I've got about probably 30 or 40 walnut logs left to saw up. I need to get on stickers before the winter gets here. I'll try to do a little, uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, maybe do a little video on my log yard, giving you guys a little tour of it, showing you what all I got left to saw up down there. If you guys are interested in seeing something like that, then leave me a comment below, and we'll do a short video there on what kind of timber we got left to saw. Well, the first thing I did this morning was I started to do the final sanding on the tabletop, and this is the underside. And on the far corner here on the breadboard end, where you see this painter's tape, I had to do a little epoxy fill. I had a little bit of a crack running parallel with the drain right here. And uh, it's not really a bad crack. It probably would have been fine if I didn't feel it, but I like to feel areas like that, especially on the end, because that could be a potential weakness one day when the table gets some age on it. Well, I've been working on the bottom of the table here and I got it all sanded up. And here's another little area, a little void that I found. And I had some epoxy mixed up already to do this other corner, so I went ahead and had that filled while I had it out. It wasn't really necessary, but since I had the epoxy ready to go, I thought I'd go ahead and fill it. Now once that epoxy sets up, I'll do a final little sanding over the epoxy parts and the rest of the tabletop here and get it ready for finish. And I'll put the oil on the bottom side of the table first. I'll probably do about two coats and call that side done and flip it over and start doing my coats for the top of it. Now some people don't put finish on the non-show surfaces of their project, but I think it overall makes the wood a little bit more stable if you got finish all the way around it. When it comes to putting finish on, here's my little mixture of what I like to do. One part boiled linseed oil, one part tongue oil. The lighting in here is horrible. I really did some better lights for in here. And one part varnish, which in this case is going to be Water Lots Original. So what I do here, I got this little measuring cup. It's a fourth of a cup, and that's usually enough of all three uh, ingredients here for a decent first coating measure them out I keep all my finishing products inside of my house my shop is not climate controlled and uh, in order to make this stuff last a lot longer and, uh, really get your value out of it I recommend putting it inside of a climate controlled area I got a small utility room in my basement that I keep all my finish at Truly really just keeps it from going bad. One of the worst things for glue and finish both is to be left out in cold weather and just different climates. It needs a good steady temperature to stay really fresh and be ready to go when you need it. And I mix all three of these up and 
there's my finish hole right there. And, uh, it's a really good combination. I got this idea from uh, the Canadian uh, Canadian woodworking. He's on Instagram, and uh, he, he's a woodworker and a sawmill guy up in Canada. And he's really good about sharing a lot of his experiences and a lot of his uh, methods on Instagram. And, uh, that meeting I went to lasted about an hour longer than I thought it was going to, so it really uh, got into my solemn time today. I doubt we'll get the wood miser going today, but we'll try to get this under underside of the table with the first coat of finish. Now this is not the top the uh, top side, this is the underside, so it's got some blemishes still and some defects that we really didn't fool with trying to fix or improve because it is the no-show side of the table. So we are gonna get an idea how this oil's gonna look on this quarter sawn white oak. really making this uh, oak here come to life when you start putting your finish on it. Even if this is the under, under side of the table, it gives you a good idea what the top's going to look like whenever we start putting finish on it. Probably start putting finish on the top tomorrow afternoon. If I can get two coats on of this and dry it by then, we'll flip it over and start doing the top. Now with this oil, you just kind of put it on and just brush it right in. You can use a rag for this. I like these little inexpensive foam brushes, but anything will really work for it. And uh, you wait about 10 to 30 minutes after you put your application on. You take a blue shop towel and wipe off the excess and let it dry. I try to let about 12 to 24 hours pass before I uh, put the next coat on. See right there on the corner, that's where the little knot was that we filled with epoxy this morning. And uh, that filled in rather well and it's really stable now. And you and uh, you don't have to worry about that piece breaking off if somebody leans on the table or hits it the wrong way. These little rays that are running across the grain, that's the medullary rays. And uh, that's what you get when you quarter saw your oak, medullary rays. Well, that's our first coat of finish on the underside of our farm table. And uh, I'll wait about 30 minutes and take the shop rag and wipe it down and we'll do another coat tomorrow. Now, I got a little bit of finish left, so I think I'll go inside in the house. I got the base of this table in the den. And I'll go ahead and put the third and final coat on it. I've not showed that yet, how it's looking. And the reason it's in the house is that it was kind of cold the other day when I started putting finish on it. And you want to have a nice uh, warm room temperature when you put finish on your projects or else the finish won't dry and you'll just be left with a mess. So let's go in the house here and put one more coat on the base and I'll show you how that walnut's looking with the finish on it. 